DACA like we did see um, earlier in the week. And so why did this group of attorneys general feel that now was the correct time for this? Well, the United States, we are based on a country of laws. And so we are simply asking uh, this president, this administration to uh, to go back and to make this something in law or to let it be decided by Congress rather because what President Obama did, and this is where the problem starts, when President Obama ignored the will of Congress, did not go through the proper channels and in putting DACA into place. And so what we're basically saying is that this decision should not rest in the hands of the president alone, that the proper place for it is with Congress. And that's why I think we have a responsible plan from this president roll this out over a six-month period by rescinding DACA Im immediately, however, with the understanding that those applications that are already in will be dealt with, those applications who need to be renewed can do so by October 5th if they're going to expire by March. And so there's so many things that are responsible about this, whereas the Obama administration and President Obama in particular ignored how our country is set up and just said through executive order, I'm going to change immigration policy. And then other groups like the ACLU, though, are saying that he did act within the Constitution. Um, and so kind of, you know, is this a common practice from the executive branch to decide who shouldn't and should be deported? And then are you confident that DACA would be defeated in court? Well, I am very confident that uh, if DACA, if we had gone through and filed a lawsuit, that it would have been uh, defeated just as uh, the parent case, DAPA, was defeated in court. And that is even Senator Feinstein, the ranking member in the Senate Judiciary, Democrat ranking member, said that it was on shaky constitutional grounds. So even Democrats recognize that DACA itself was on shaky constitutional grounds. So what we were merely saying is that we are a country of laws and that this needs to be decided by Congress. And that is why I was glad and that the president took the action that he did. And Attorney General Jeff Sessions came out on Monday, made that announcement. So now we have a responsible plan for dealing with immigration and really holding Congress's feet to the fire. Yeah, that's exactly what it's doing. I mean, President Trump is giving Congress six months, this kind of tight deadline on something that we've seen be a very controversial topic mm -hmm. of immigration. And so, I mean, what do you expect to happen if Congress can't reach a deal? Well, I don't have my crystal ball, Jesse, so I can't uh, tell you what this president is going to do, but I'm hopeful and based on the conversations that I have had or others have been having with Arkansas's delegation that there are plans in place now, that they are going to address this. And this is something that has been on the back burner for far too long. Again, we are a country of laws. Uh, these individuals that are uh, part of the DACA program, I have met with a number of them. Many of them, yes, are very impressive, and they are individuals that perhaps you know, need that uh, pathway. How, but my job as Attorney General is not to set immigration policy. My job is to uphold the law. And then there are about 5,000 DACA recipients just right here in Arkansas, and many of them have never known another country. What would you maybe tell somebody who's never been to Mexico or Latin America who might soon find themselves deported there? Well, individuals that are born here are U.S. citizens. So these are individuals that came over as young children. Most of them, uh, the DACA recipients, are in their 20s. Uh, these are adults uh, that, again, have a reasonable timeline. You know, that, I, again, I met with them. I understand that, you know, how hard it is because, yes, they have known the United States as their country or rather, you know, living here for all their lives from the times that their parents brought over. But the reason why their parents came to America to begin with is because of all the reasons that our founding fathers put in place in our Constitution and because we are a country of laws. And so we want to do something, we want Congress to do something that recognizes that we're a country of laws, that we don't want an executive branch overreaching its authority like President Obama did in 2012 uh, when he signed this executive order and put this in place. The Department of Homeland Security, they're not looking, they're looking for criminals and bad actors. That this is not, DACA is not a mass deportation. And so I think uh, rather than watching those who disagree perhaps with the president's actions on this, rather than creating chaos, we need to have civil conversations with our members of Congress and for them to put forth real immigration reform. Announcement on Tuesday, um, Jeff Sessions said that DACA has denied jobs to hundreds of thousands of Americans by allowing those jobs to go into what he calls in the hands of illegal aliens. And so, you know, Trump is our businessman president, sure. but is this move bad for business like some are saying? 
Well, whether or not it's uh, bad for business, I think time will tell. I think that we want to encourage uh, people to come to the United States illegally. We want to encourage them to go through the proper channels to become U.S. citizens, uh, to have these work permits. Unfortunately, again, what President Obama did in 2012 was to create a pathway that was not within the bounds of the law, that was outside his scope as president. And so, and he even noted at that time that it would be a temporary fix. But unfortunately, he fell to the whims of political pressure in 2012 during that uh, campaign and put DACA in place. So what we're asking now is for Congress to address immigration, the president saying, let's do this within six months. There's not many things that can't get done in six months. And so I'm hopeful that Congress will, will get to work. Uh, I know that our members of Congress are committed to it here in Arkansas and that they will get to work on this immigration reform. And I know you said that you have to look at this, obviously, from an attorney general's standpoint. Um, but just it seems like there's kind of a lot of people here who would maybe, you know, feel comfortable living in America, may kind of go back to living in the shadows, some may say. So um, are, I know you're examining this from a legal perspective, but are you worried about some real world, real, sorry, that's hard to say, real world consequences from this? Well, I hope that uh, what we see are people actually coming out of the shadows and wanting uh, to continue having civil discourse uh, with our lawmakers to say, these are all the great things that we've done, and to have those conversations with them, to meet with them, but to also look for you know, how they can become legal citizens of the United States. That we, you know, if the individual or anything like I met, we want them to become citizens of the United States and not simply be here on a a temporary basis. All right. Well, hey, we'll continue to pay attention to what Congress does over the next six months for Great. sure. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You bet. Coming up after a quick break, we'll look at some of the opposition to this Trump administration decision.